Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. <coughs> it's 8 o'clock on Thursday the 15th of February. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer, Morning Prayer for Lent. And just opening my app on my tablet so that we're ready to go. So, if you're following the book Common Worship Daily Prayer, you'll need to look up morning and evening prayer during the seasons. Oops, sorry, just switching on Facebook. <coughs> Hello, good morning to you joining us on Facebook. Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England. Welcome to St Mary's. Morning Prayer Lent, if you're following the book Common Worship Daily Prayer, is to be found in the uh, morning and evening prayer during the seasons section. Morning Prayer Lent, that's halfway through that part of the book. Um, we've got a couple of commemorations, Thomas, Bray and Siegfried. Um, we'll probably turn to Siegfried, just going to open my Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints to see what they've got there. <clears throat> probably be a uh, biography, yeah, we can read that uh, shortly. So you're welcome to join me in the building 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday for Divine Office. Uh, you may join by Zoom, code on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page, same times. Facebook, we live stream, but it stays up as a video for you to watch for up to a month. And the audio I will upload onto my Dominic Dobel YouTube channel presently. Uh, you may follow the words, I don't think I said, um, either in the book Common Worship Daily Prayer or at the Church of England's website, Aremus Daily Prayer, and uh, they are downloadable as app for Apple or Android device, which for a small sub one can watch, uh, use offline. Uh, Aremus also, if you're using that for the service, um, stand advised that there are plenty of other offerings there, searchable Bibles and uh, lectionaries, so you know what readings are coming up, etc. throughout the year. <coughs> Very worthwhile, do make a donation as you're visiting. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of, our, of, God of compassion and mercy, to you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Verses from Psalm 51, a song of penitence. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin, for I acknowledge my faults and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> the psalm appointed this morning, number 77, you'll find it at the back of the book. Psalm 77. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire. My soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan. I ponder and my spirit faints. You will not let my eyelids close. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old. I remember the years long past. 
I commune with my heart in the night, <clears throat> and my spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast us off for ever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy clean gone for ever? Has his promise come to an end for evermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he shut up his compassion in displeasure? And I said, my grief is this, that the right hand of the Most High has lost its strength. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your works and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are the God who worked wonders and declared your power among the peoples. With a mighty arm you redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. <clears throat> the waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the ground. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters but your footsteps were not known. <clears throat> you led your people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In the day of my trouble, I have sought the Lord. <clears throat> the Song of Manasseh, turning back in our books to morning prayer during Lent. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God Most High. You are full of compassion, long-suffering, and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. O God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. <clears throat> Unworthy as I am, you will save me, according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is for ever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. And so, just before we turn to our Genesis reading, can't be very many more of those left. This is uh, from Kindle Edition of Celebrating the Saints. The name of Siegfried is connected with at least three different places in Sweden, all of which are associated with its first Christian king, Olof Skotkonung Hasakbi, in the west, where the king is supposed to have been baptised, Sigtuna, where the king founded a Christian town and royal mint, and it actually tells me how to pronounce this one, Veksha, which looks like Thaxo, where Siegfried built a church and was consecrated bishop. Apologies for the appalling pronunciation. Siegfried was most probably an Englishman sent by King Ethelred to assist in the evangelization of Norway and Sweden in the 11th century. Two chronologies are possible. He may have arrived in Sweden before the year 1000, in which case he could have been the royal baptizer, or he may have sailed from England later in 1016 in the company of the Norwegian King Olaf. He is known <clears throat> to have taken with him two fellow missionaries, both of whom were eventually consecrated bishops. Bishops Siegfried died in Vexha in around 1045, though a date as late as 1069 is also possible and is much revered throughout Scandinavia. So one of that little band of uh, merry men who popped over to Northern Europe, I think at around that sort of time. Um, and then also Boniface, who was uh, associated with Crediton in Devon, where I was curate. Genesis 39, our first Bible reading, other than the Psalms and what we've used liturgically so far. Uh, Genesis, the first book of the Hebrew Scriptures, first book of the Bible, if you've got both covenants in it, printed out. Uh, turn to the beginning, after the contents and the title page, Genesis. And then a good way through the book, several pages, and you'll find chapter number 39, large number 39 at the head of the paragraph. Online, just scroll back from the canticle we read a moment ago, uh, and you should find that headed Genesis 39, the whole chapter. <coughs> 
Now Joseph was taken down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him down there. The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a successful man. He was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper in his hands. So Joseph found favour in his sight and attended him. He made him overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. From the time that he made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. The blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in house and field. So he left all that he had in Joseph's charge. And with him there he had no concern for anything but the food that he ate. Now Joseph was handsome and good-looking, and after a time his master's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, Lie with me, but he refused, and said to his master's wife, Look, with me here my master has no concern about anything in the house, and he has put everything that he has in my hand. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept back anything from me except yourself, because you are his wife. How then could I do this great wickedness and sin against God? And although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he would not consent to lie beside her or to be with her. One day, however, when he went into the house to do his work, while no one else was in the house, she caught hold of his garment, saying, Lie with me, but he left his garment in her hand and fled and ran outside. When she saw that he had left his garment in her hand and had fled outside, she called out to the members of her household and said to them, See, my husband has brought among us a Hebrew to insult us. He came in to me to lie with me, and I cried out in a loud voice, and when he heard me raise my voice and cry out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. Then she kept his garment by her until his master came home, and she told him the same story, saying, the Hebrew servant whom you have brought among us came into me to insult me, but as soon as I raised my voice and cried out, he left his garment beside me and fled outside. When his master heard the words that his wife spoke to him, saying, This is the way your servant treated me, he became enraged. Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, the place where the king's prisoners were confined. He remained there in prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love. He gave him favour in the sight of the chief jailer. The chief jailer committed to Joseph's care. <clears throat> uh, all the prisoners who were in the prison and whatever was done there, he was the one who did it. The chief jailer paid no heed to anything that was in Joseph's care because the Lord was with him, and whatever he did, the Lord made it prosper. Joseph. <clears throat> Within our ancient texts, you will have noticed, as we talked about Israel and uh, the sons, certainly as we make our way into the histories and the other stories, <clears throat> that uh, it's... Uh, an ancient, something to do with the ancient cultures that uh, they might use the one name to mean a people. <coughs> so it's a bit like the Scottish clans. We talk about uh, Anderson, my tartan here, and we mean not only the founder or the, the progenitor, but also the entire uh, clan of Anderson. And uh, with Joseph here, we take yet another step. Joseph is Joseph, a forerunner of Jesus. Is um, Joseph a representative um, of all his people and? Um, I know there are bad apples in all ethnicities and all faiths and religions, but do we see Joseph as being a forerunner of the church? And one would hope that where one um, employs and engages Jews, where one employs and engages Christians, Muslims and other people of faith, that they will be honourable, upright, just and true. Therefore one can leave business in their hands without necessarily needing to put in Obviously, putting accountability in is a sensible move. I'm not suggesting we don't, but I hope you hear what I'm trying to say. If you've got an honourable, religious, devout, God-fearing person working with you and for you, those um, safety nets are there for safety and uh, to assure us and confirm that they really are the people they are, rather than to make sure that we're safe from their potential double-dealing, embezzlement and uh, theft. Nevertheless, we are not immune from false accusations, thinking of uh, whether they're false or not, thinking of uh, the way the right-wing press and our right-wing government have decided to stand against the church alongside other people at the moment and declare that the church is aiding the betting people's safety and sanctuary um, by admitting them into the Christian faith through the rite of baptism, which is deemed to be unacceptable by those um, voices. <clears throat> And uh, whether or not that is true, I suspect it is probably not, but it would seem to be a very worthwhile thing to do if it gave somebody an extra argument to remain safe, particularly if most of those people who come as far as they have, in my view and understanding, uh, have training, have education, have money, have connections. Um, else why would they've made the effort to get as far as they have to here? And so it's just one more piece in the argument that they ought to be allowed to stay. Nevertheless, uh, it's an accusation that it's sort of anti-government, it's anti-English, that's the implication, the insinuation. And there are all sorts of other things in which 
post office clerks and the like have been accused and the systems have set them up to fail and it's not their fault and so it is with Joseph here it's not his fault we're told Joseph was handsome and good looking there are plenty of um, people who have been raped who we're told it's their fault um, because they are um, good looking or they dress themselves well of whatever gender but it isn't and uh, so it was ever thus I guess is what I'm saying and even though things go from bad to worse, admittedly he wasn't killed, which some of the brothers wanted to do to him yesterday. <clears throat> he finds favour wherever he falls, even though he's in prison, he's in charge of it. And uh, so may we, even in a broken and corrupt world, where we're trying to cook ourselves as soon as possible in our organisation, of trying to rip themselves apart from the inside, let us be people of hope and faith, that where we are at least, there is that assurance that we've got a safe pair of hands, a calm a non-anxious presence that things will be okay on the, and on that basis flourishing fruitfulness security safety grace hope joy love truth may flourish to galatians 2 then from verse 11 scroll onto it online galatians is in the aeiou set of books written to small congregations after the first and second letters of paul to corinth but before the smaller shorter letters to and from named individuals in the greek scriptures so turn to the back of the book halfway through through the last third, you should find Galatians. <coughs> uh, we're looking for chapter 2. Do use the index if it doesn't fall open. Uh, scroll on if you're following electronically. Galatians chapter 2, and we're starting at verse 11. So the chapter numbers are the large number at the head of the paragraph. The first numbers are the small numbers in the texts. Galatians 2 from 11. But when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face, because he stood self-condemned, for until certain people came from James, he used to eat with the Gentiles, but after they came, he drew back and kept himself separate for fear of the circumcision faction. The other Jews joined him in this hypocrisy, so that even Barnabas was led astray by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not acting consistently with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas before them all, if you, though a Jew, live like a Gentile and not like a Jew, how can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners, yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. We've come to live in Christ Jesus so that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by doing the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But if in our efforts to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been found to be sinners, is Christ then servant of sin? Certainly not. If I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law, so that I might live to God. And I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not nullify the grace of God, for it is justification. For if justification comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. So this is a continuation of that um, ever-present discussion at the time. Must a man have his foreskin removed surgically uh, to make him a Christian? Is, is it possible to be Christian without um, having been circumcised? And uh, Paul's view is an interesting one because he is Jewish. He would have been circumcised, yet he says it's not important. It's not essential. Well, it's not essential. It's certainly not important. In, in some places, he explains as here, uh, in a number of places, as here, he explains that. Um, whatever uh, submission to the law, however carefully we fulfil that, so he's not nullifying it, he's just saying however careful we are to fulfil all the Jewish instructions, there would have been many Pharisees around, for example, who were still tithing their dill and whatnot, that actually it's the grace of God that enables and allows that piety to be fruitful and gives us that relationship with God that gives us the desire to be pious and humble and holy. And uh, it's what God has done for us. It's faith in that, in and through, in Paul's terms here, Jesus Christ, that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, that enables <coughs> those Jewish devotions to have uh, traction and worth and value as far as he is concerned. <coughs> so it's not the law that justifies. It's um, the death of Jesus as that paschal lamb, the blood on the doorposts, that means the angel of death, when it passes by, will not touch us. <coughs> but um, Paul and Barnabas were quite close. I don't know whether Barnabas remained in the circumcision faction, whether he was circumcised. 
but uh, Paul is very strong against that group, particularly uh, Cephas or Peter, the same person who was turned up and was living like a Gentile until some other people who were um, from the Jerusalem sort of church council came and then he changes his attitude, changes his mind. And uh, Paul, who changed his mind, of course, maybe that's why he's particularly cross about it. <coughs> Uh, he tells Peter to sort himself out. And then he gives his theology, theological argument as to why. So to the responsory back in morning prayer during Lent. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love. They are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. The Song of Zechariah. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant, David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, <clears throat> to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Make a lover keeper, three in one, one in three. We come to you at the beginning of this day recognising that uh, we are called to holiness and uh, right living <clears throat> and making the right decisions in terms of our engagement with the wider world sometimes that is more straightforward than others but we pray we'll be noted for our integrity and our honesty and that that be an inspiration to others to live right we pray that as a national organization we do that sadly we haven't recently stipendiary clergy not being paid for well, 24 hours a day in their pay and we decided to let everybody know that it was a junior person rather than the organisation and the CEO's oversight to not make sure that there was adequate training or accountability. And we also as church recognise that we sometimes fail as we set ourselves up over and against other people and put faith and trust in things that don't actually make us believers. You might say, well, our bishop was uh, ordained or um, installed by a male bishop We'd only ever had their hands laid on the Bombay of bishops back to Peter. And I know that matters for some, just as circumcision mattered for some. We might only marry, or we might be uh, open to marrying same-sex people, and other people might say that that's not acceptable. I know within the Church of England it isn't, but the Church in Wales, Anglican, the Episcopal Church of Scotland, Anglican, do. Methodists locally do. So there are different views and opinions and uh, it would be my prayer and hope that the Church of England um, establishes a secure boundary that uh, people may know that they do belong, they are in the fold, and that they don't need to fear for their jobs, their livelihoods, their families, um, their reputations, because they hold different views to other people. And the Church of England has always had a vast variety of views. Let us not go down the route that the main political parties have to exclude anybody who doesn't have the monolithic view of the leader. It is, I think, a sign of weakness, not strength. Austria Liechtenstein, Switzerland, prayers four from World Council of Churches. We give thanks for the political and economic transparency in those countries and for we pray for religious freedom, um, particularly for those from non-Christian traditions. Christian Action Search Education. <coughs> Uh, I'm just looking through the uh, paragraph and I'm not sure that I 
uh, would agree with it to pray for it. Having just said that, I guess I ought to just read it through. Um, God of truth, we pray about the increasing bias towards gender theory, the idea that biological sex and gender identity are two distinct factors of human being, uh, not least by the Department of Education, official RSE ratifying body, PSHE association made up of 50,000 RSE professionals. They pray, please bring about a reverse in these ideas as people realise their dangers. Um, that is their view. It wouldn't be mine. Uh, fifth mark of mission, Anglican Communion, uh, is for environment and engagement with it. Pope Francis' prayer for creation includes the lines, touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. In our benefice cycle of prayer, on Thursdays we pray for farmers, of course, and uh, farming networks. We pray for health as consumers and a healthy relationship with ourselves, our bodies, with uh, our diet and with our world. May we know what that looks like and may we have the um, power, the energy, the will to move in that direction. We pray therefore that our political people will be moved to recognise that we do want to live healthy lives. We pray that uh, the processing procurement, uh, wholesale retail, part of our food supply chain will also be healthy, will be basically local, will be basically uh, fair and will pay good rates in all places to those who need and want that, that there won't be a drive to reduce price as the main reason for what we eat and who we are, despite the health implications to creation ourselves and the plants and animals. Morning. Good morning. And uh, we pray too, therefore, for the farmers and that they will have a healthy relationship with their land, with their bankers, with their insurers, that they may likewise live healthy lives and live on healthy land and uh, have a healthy future. And we pray for our people giving thanks for the church wardens that look after the churches in the St Andrew's group. We've got Joe at St Mary's Chediston, Geoffrey at St Andrew's Wisset, Keith at St Peter's Spexel, Malcolm at St Margaret's Linstead. We pray for the, treasure, the treasurers and the secretaries also in those church councils. We pray a blessing on them. We ask that you enable them to be open and welcoming to invite other people into those committees to increase their capacity give them opportunities to perhaps choose uh, who they have in those posts and those who are office holders to potentially step back and step down. We've got electoral roll names for Wissett, Spexel and Linstead, namely Claire Edward Henry, Nick and David, Jennifer Valerie, Diana Susan, Helena Eve, Hugh, Richard, Kathleen Thomas and Anne, in Spexel, Fred, Be Betty, the Beryls, Caroline, Karen, Barbara, Melissa, Roxanne, Patricia, David, Janet, Ms. Craig Elizabeth Burke, Francis, and in Linstead, Janet, Sheila, Angela, Irene, Cecilia, Margaret, Derek, and Pauline, and Heather. We pray a blessing on them and encouragement in their faith journey, especially that they might have a good and holy Lent. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer.
Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on Facebook and YouTube.